In this video, I will show you how to set up and use a distillation apparatus. Over here, we have a distillation kit, and it contains several important pieces, different sizes of round bottom glass. It has both a condenser and a column. They look pretty much the same, and I'll explain the difference between them as we go along. We also have what's called a still head. This is what's going to be at the top. The distillation will occur up this way and over that way. And we have the what's called a collector adapter. It's a curved piece. It's the most expensive piece in the kit and tends to get broken, so we're very careful with that. We also have the thermometer adapter that we put at the top of the distillation apparatus. We have two pieces of rubber tubing. We have a thermometer. Uh, we have some boiling chips. Let's go ahead and get started. So let's add some of the material that we're going to be distilling. In this case, I'm just going to distill some vinegar. Lots of different possibilities. I'll just pour some vinegar in here. Now, as a general rule of thumb, you don't want to have your still pot more than half full. So since this happens to be a 250 milliliter round bottom flask, you don't want to have more than about 100 milliliters of liquid. And that's clearly less than half, so that's fine. I'm also going to add some boiling chips. These are little pieces of inert material that don't react with the solution, don't react with anything. They just serve as jagged surfaces for bubbles to form on so that the boiling occurs smoothly. So I put my liquid in, I put some boiling chips in. I'm going to put the still head on it. And notice that the ground glass pieces fit together perfectly, so we don't need to do any kind of grease or anything like that. I'm going to attach the thermometer adapter with a thermometer. Carefully putting the thermometer into the thermometer adapter so that the bulb of the thermometer comes through the bottom. In fact, you want the bulb of the thermometer to be quite a ways below because you want the bulb of the thermometer to be just below the point where the liquid will go over. So let's reduce that down a little bit further yet. Notice that the bottom of the thermometer is just about at the bottom of the still head. Okay. Now I'm going to attach the condenser of the two pieces that look kind of the same in the kit. Notice that one is kind of fat, the other one is kind of skinny. It's the skinny one that's generally the condenser, although in reality it really doesn't make much difference at all. We're going to use the correct one, which is the narrower tube. We're going to attach it on here eventually. Well, let's not attach that just yet because if I attach it on here and leave it, it's possible that it could fall off and break, and we don't want that to happen. So instead, let's go ahead and attach the smaller round bottom flask. This is what we're going to be distilling into. I will attach it to a second ring stand. And notice that, again, I'm uh, clamping it at the neck of the round bottom flask, just as I did on this round bottom flask. Then I'm going to attach the curved piece, which is the collecting adapter. Notice that the collecting adapter has a little sidearm here. That could be, if you wish to do so, attached to an aspirator or some other vacuum source, and when the whole apparatus is connected, and this were attached to a aspirator, the whole distillation can be done under a reduced pressure. As you remember, boiling point decreases as the pressure decreases, so if you decrease the pressure inside the whole apparatus, you can reduce the boiling point and perhaps make the distillation easier. In some cases, that's a useful thing to be able to do. But if it's not attached to a aspirator or to a source of a vacuum, this just serves to keep the whole distillation apparatus open to the atmosphere. The reason you want to do that is if you don't have it open to the atmosphere and you start to heat it, you build up pressure inside the container and you can blow the whole thing apart. So that's a very important little sidearm. Put it in there. And of course, because it's Rambon flask is clamped and this is sitting inside the neck of the Rambon flask, it's not going to fall out and break. Then, clearly, these aren't going to match up, so I'm going to have to lower one or raise the other one. Let's lower this one down a little bit. Now, I can attach my condenser in the middle. I'm going to have to move one or the other or both flasks. I may have to raise or lower one or the other. 
They have to change the angles at which they're situated. The idea is we need to make sure that all the joints are tight and all of the places where the glass is joined so that no vapors escape. Then I'm going to use my two pieces of rubber tubing. One I'm going to attach to, to the water spigot, which is right here. That's then going to go and attach to the lower of the two pieces on the jacketed condenser. The other one is going to drain into the sink. And the reason we do it that way is we want the water to be running uphill in the condenser. So let's attach the one on there. And to the water faucet. The other piece I'm going to attach on the higher of the two and into the sink. That way when I turn the water on, what you'll notice is that water comes up from the bottom and out the top. And see the bubbles flowing through there. Uh, I have the two ports so they sort of pointing up in the air like that. That's fine. You can leave them like that. Or, once the jacket is filled, you can actually rotate it backwards a bit. Okay, I believe we're ready to start distilling now. All the joints are tight, and I'm simply going to light my Bunsen burner. Now, you may be using a heating mantle or some other source of heat. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and light a Bunsen burner. Now, that's a little bit large of a flame, so I'm going to reduce the size of the flame a little bit. One thing to notice is that the water going through the jacket is only just sort of dribbling out. It's not flowing really fast through the jacket. But if you put your hand on there, you'll feel that it feels kind of cold. But the idea is that the water is going through the jacket of this tube, but not through the middle of the tube. It's keeping the, the tube that goes through the middle cold so that when the vapor hits there, it will condense the vapor and the vapor will drip down into the collecting flask. To heat it, I'm simply going to start waving the flame under the still flask and because the Bunsen burner itself is not hot, I can pick it up. It's not hot anywhere down here. The only hot part is the tip of the Bunsen burner, and I'm going to pull the glass over so that we can keep the air flowing through the hood from bothering that flame quite so much. Now, while that's boiling, let me talk about this particular distillation of vinegar. Now, it's very likely that when I boil the liquid over, some of the acetic acid, which is the sort of active ingredient of vinegar, will boil over, along with quite a bit of water, which is the main ingredient in vinegar. If I wanted to separate the acetic acid from the water more efficiently, I'd use a kind of distillation called a fractional distillation. So before we actually start distilling this, let me show you how to set up a fractional distillation. I'm going to turn off the flame. I'm going to take this apparatus apart and set it up as a fractional distillation. Now, fractional distillation, we're going to put what's called a column in between them. The larger of the two things that look like condensers, this is actually not a condenser, this is actually a column. And you may notice that on the inside of the tube, there are three little impressions that point into the middle of the tube. Those are designed to hold up something that you might put into the middle of the tube. In this case, we're going to put some uh, copper wool. We're going to carefully stick it into the inside of the tube. It's a little bit tricky because it's not very stiff and it tends to want to bunch up. That's why I like to use a thick piece of glass stirring rod and just stick it down into the middle of the tube like that. And if a little bit sticks out, you can just kind of stick it in with your finger like that. And then I'm going to attach the still head to the top of the condenser like that. And I'll put the whole thing into the distillation apparatus. Notice now that the still head is way up there. There's the round bottom flask. That's the so-called still pot. There's the condenser. And there's the still head way up at the top. What that means is that my collecting flask is too low, so I'm going to have to raise that considerably. Again, I'm going to put the collection adapter in there. I'm going to attach my condenser, which, by the way, still has water flowing through it. I haven't changed that at all. I'm going to 
cap on one end, the other end, lower this down significantly. Again, this is the hard part, is getting the pieces aligned exactly correctly. And there we go. And now the apparatus is set up where there's the round bottom blast with the boiling chips. There's the column. There's the still head with the thermometer in it. There's a condenser attached to using the, the collecting adapter. And there's my collecting flask. I'm going to light my Bunsen burner again, and I can start heating the material down here. Now this apparatus with the column in it is called a fractional distillation because you're going to divide the whatever material it is you're distilling, in this case vinegar, into two or more fractions. So hopefully when the distillation is complete, I will have a acetic acid fraction and a water fraction. The separation will be much more efficient using a fractional distillation than it would have using a simple distillation. The simple distillation I showed you to begin with is more useful for purifying a, a solvent if it has material in it that isn't going to distill, like for example salt water. You can purify the water by distilling it and leaving the salt behind and the salt's not going to distill over. I changed my Bunsen burner by opening up the air a little bit and making a much hotter flame. see it from where you are, but the uh, bubbles are beginning to form on the boiling chips, and the boiling chips are dancing around in the solvent, and there we go, we're starting to get big bubbles, so the vinegar is actually beginning to boil now. There it goes. The liquid is going up into the column. It's boiling down below and beginning to condense inside the column. And you may also notice that over here, in the collecting flask, we're beginning to get liquid forming, condensing in the condenser. Now at this point, because the liquid is distilling nicely and condensing, we're going to want to read the thermometer. I think it's right at 100 degrees. So more than likely, what we have is water distilling over and the acetic acid may actually be staying behind in the still flask. That's how you use the distillation apparatus. I've now let the apparatus cool somewhat and I'm going to show you how to take it apart. Not very really tricky, just remember to take it apart from the top. So I'm first going to take the the solution head, separate it from the condenser, holding on the condenser, take that out. The water is still flowing through there, so I'm going to turn the water off. And when I detach it from the water faucet, you can see that the water then runs out of the jacket. And I'm ready to set it aside and clean it up. Then I'm going to take the still head off, take the thermometer out. I can set those pieces aside, take a take the thermometer out of the thermometer adapter, clean those pieces up, put them back in the kit, take out the distillation column, and I could take out the copper and either recycle it or throw it away, and finally take out the uh, collecting adapter and clean it up and put it away, and then my two round bottle flasks I will empty into whatever container they need to be emptied into, 